Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Mozart's Die Zauberflöte, which I saw at the Zempel Oper Dresden. The conductor was Moritz Gnan, the production sets and costumes were done by Achim Freier, the sonographer was Hendrik Müller, the assistant sets and costume designer was Petra Weikert, the lights were handled by Gerd Budschik, and the chorus master was Jörn Hinnerk Andersen. I was really excited to see this particular production of Mozart's Die Zauberflöte, because this was my very first time at the Zempel Opa Dresden. And after witnessing this particular opera house in person, I was completely pleased with my experience, not only because of the amazing architecture and the amazing amounts of history this opera house had, but also everything that defined it, especially tonight's cast. We not only had the likes of Georg Zeppenfeld as Zarastro, but we had some pretty new names to me, like Danaya Contora as the Queen of the Night, Carolina Ulrich as Pamina, Christiana Hosfeld as Papagena, and of course, Rafael Fingerlos, who sang the role of Tamino, and lest I forget about the ever wonderful, ever charismatic Bernhard Hansky, who I've mostly known him in a lot of the commercial Opa productions, and here he was singing in a very small part, which was one of the priests. I will gladly talk about the performances much later in this review, but first, my thoughts on the production. Overall, I have to say that I was not really a major fan of Achim Freya's production of Die Zauberflöte. My very first experience with this particular production was when I saw a clip of Victoria Joyce singing Der Hülle Rache in that production, and my 15-year-old mind back then thought to myself, man, that looked really, really weird. But then again, there were some weirder productions of the Zauberflöte as well, and not just that. But as time went on, I had to keep an open mind, and I have to say that it was kind of amusing. It was kind of cute seeing the three boys play off of each other, whether it be in the very first moments before the overture, or even while they're on stage. And I guess one can say that this particular production of the Zauberflöte is supposed to be envisioned by how a child sees the opera. Like we have two pairs of lovers, two who are kind of emotional and tend to be rather melancholic, and two who are extremely jovial and really, really full of life, i.e. Tamino and Pamina, and Papageno and Papagena, and I can definitely understand that. And of course, even had the villains like the Queen of the Night and her three ladies and Monostatos, and the good guys like Zarastro, the Speaker of the Temple, and his many followers, which I sort of understood where this production was coming from. It's supposed to be sort of like how a young child, or better yet, a very, very young child sees the Zauberflöte. We have good versus evil, and a lot of really colorful characters coming about on stage. And it's just so full of color. And that's one thing I still have to give credit to Achim Freya's production of the Zauberflöte. It was really colorful, no doubt about that. There was a lot of color bouncing around the stage. It was brilliant in terms of its execution. And I thought it was quite cute of how they handled it. And of course, the costumes were rather simple, but hey, they were colorful. What I also noticed is that there were also some color schemes being used for the couples, mainly that of Tamino and Pamina. With Tamino and Pamina, they're made to dress up with white and dark blue. What with having Tamino's hair being jet black and Pamina's being blue, and both of them having like white and black makeup, and they both wear matching white shirts and blue overalls. And it's basically to state that both of them are very melancholic characters who tend to be really emotional, and they seem to be sort of the centerpiece of the entire opera. And with Papageno and Papagena, they both wear matching red and green outfits, probably to show how jovial and full of life they are and how brightly colored they are as characters, not only in terms of their personalities, but also in terms of their costumes. 
So overall, while I'm not a major fan of Achim Freier's production of the Zauberflöte, the colors still managed to burst out really well. And of course, there was that sense of cuteness and innocence that I kind of liked, but it served its purpose and it was kind of enjoyable from time to time. And I managed to get a chuckle out of certain moments, which was kind of a big plus for this production. And now we get to the singers, starting off with Tomislav Muzjek, who sang the role of Tamino, and he had an amazing voice. He had a very well-controlled, very pliable, and warm-sounding, full lyric tenor voice. The way he was able to modulate his sound with great diction and a really focused timbre was really amazing. And his acting was quite well done. He made the best out of Tamino, both vocally and dramatically, and I can definitely tell that he's been seeing this role for many years, and he certainly had a fair amount of experience at his side when he sang this role. There is a great amount of experience found in Mr. Muziek by the way he sang Tamino, with how mature sounding and beautiful his voice was. And he had that fine incisive timbre, which makes me foresee his future into slightly heavier roles like, let's say, the Duke from Rigoletto, Alfredo from La Traviata, or even that of Rodolfo from La Boheme and many others. There is definitely a brilliance and charisma in that gentleman's voice and I would love to see a lot more of him. Then we go to Rafael Fingerlos, who sang the role of Papageno, and this was the very first time I saw this particular young baritone perform this role. And he had a really charismatic stage presence. It was a warm, fun-loving, and really lovely and adorable presence that he had. And I can definitely tell that he had a huge ball singing and acting as Papageno. He had a lot of charisma. He certainly had a lot of fun portraying Papageno. And I can definitely tell that there is a really wonderful future for this wonderful gentleman in a lot of the dramatic roles, like let's say Wolfram von Eschenbach, from Tannhäuser, among others. He certainly has a wonderful future ahead of him, and he certainly did a solid job singing the role of Papageno, backed up by fine comic timing, and of course, that focused and gorgeous lyric baritone voice. Danaya Contora was a gorgeous and wonderful queen of the night. Sure, I do prefer a dramatic coloratura soprano singing that part, a la Christina Dörtecom, Rita Shane, Eda Moza, and what we've been having with the likes of Clara Kolonets and Albina Shagimuratova, but I still have to give a great amount of credit to Danaya Contora for what she had to offer in this role. She was musically precise, she had a very gorgeous lyric color to a soprano voice, even though I do prefer a dramatic color to a soprano voice to sing the role, but I digress. She still had great musicianship. She had a fine stage presence, which she was able to make the Queen of the Night a commanding and domineering figure in her second act aria, and someone who can be quite persuasive and seductive in the first act aria and kind of dangerous in the final moment before her failed attempt to invade Sarastro's temple. I thought that Danaya Contora had a really gorgeous timbre, which was focused and clean, and she had a wonderful stage presence. I definitely hope to see her in roles like Lucia Ashton from Lucia de la Marmor, Amina from La Sonambula, Elvira from Ipuritani, Giulietta from I Capuleti e Montecchi, Ophelia from Hamlet, Manon from Massenet's Manon, Marguerite du Valois, or even that of Urbain from Les Huguenots, and maybe even that of Isabelle from Merbe's Robert le Diable, and of course the likes of Juliette from Gounod's Romeo et Juliette, Marguerite from Faust, and a lot of other great roles for a coloratura soprano. And let's not forget about Sabinetta. I don't know if she's sung the role yet, I don't know if she's even performed any of her arias, but only time will tell that she'll perform roles from Lucia to Sabinetta. 
She definitely has a wonderful voice for those said roles. But as for now, I thought that her performance as the Queen of the Night was solid. And there is a really great future for Miss Contora in a lot of these wonderful, famous coloratura soprano roles, whether it be Lucia Ashton, Amina, Elvira Valton, heck, even that of Gilda and Violetta, who knows? Time will tell when this particular soprano's career will go straight into orbit. And it's getting there. Then we have Carolina Ulrich, who sang the role of Pamina, and she had a lovely, light, lyric soprano voice, which also has that fullness of a true, full lyric soprano. She had a gorgeous, energetic, and charismatic stage presence. She was able to embody Pamina so well, not only with her youth and beauty, but also making her quite spunky in some moments. She had a lot of charisma to play off of, and her rendition of Ach Ich Fuß was gorgeously sung with that fine, light lyric soprano voice, and I would really love to see her career go much further and further into orbit because she has great musicianship, a clean and clear voice, and of course, a lot of charisma. She certainly has a very fine instrument, and I cannot wait to see a lot more of her. Christiana Hosfeld, a veteran lyric coloratura soprano, sang the ever-wonderful role of Papagena, and she was also a fine actress. She was able to portray Papagena with a lot of spunk, and a lot of really great moments, and she was absolutely fine as a singer. For someone who is quite the veteran singer and who's also been singing this role for quite some time, I have to say that her voice still managed to maintain that freshness and beauty, and she had a lot of spunk and enthusiasm to back everything up. She certainly had a wonderful, charismatic, and really involving stage presence. And she was certainly a lot of fun to watch as Papagena with her charms and that really lovely, light lyric soprano voice and that overall attitude which she managed to give, which is full of youth, beauty, and charisma. And those were basically the facets that she managed to pull off so well. Georg Zeppenfeld was a handsome Zarastro thanks to his basso cantante voice, which he managed to produce such really wonderful tones. And of course, that tall, handsome, and regal stage presence, which he managed to give. He sang his two arias so well, and he was able to give a lot of regalness to Zarastro, which I thought he did superbly. He not only acted the part really well, but he sang so focusedly. The focus and cleanliness and that really great technique that he has in his voice were in absolutely fine evidence as to how he sang Zarastro and how he embodied him. He deserves the highest marks possible and he certainly earned it. Martin Jan Niehoff was really fabulous as the speaker, all thanks to his fine bass baritone voice and that elegant and dashing stage presence. He was able to make the best out of the speaker of the temple, all thanks to that rich bass baritone voice, that tall stage presence, and of course, that absolutely involved acting which he gave to his character. He was able to give the speaker a great amount of wisdom, and he certainly embodied him really well. He was able to make him really focused as a character, and he had a very fine voice to back him up. Timothy Oliver was an absolute delight as Monostatos, all thanks to his wonderful light lyric tenor voice and that focus he has and that great amount of musicianship that he managed to give in his voice. And of course, that equally fine acting which he managed to do. He was able to act so well as Monos Patos, and he managed to have a lot of great moments with his character. But more than anything, his singing and his technique and everything about him as a fine light lyric tenor were absolutely great. His singing was of the highest order, 
and he certainly knew how to bring in a lot of charisma to Manostatos. We also had such excellent singing from the three ladies sung by Roxana Encontrera as the first lady, whose wonderful lyric soprano voice was silvery and smooth and silky. Angela Liebold's second lady, whose mezzo-soprano voice was not only lyrical, but expressive and quite beautiful. And Elisabeth Wilke's gorgeous and plush mezzo-contralto voice, as these three wonderful ladies managed to make a great amount of magic together. And of course, let's not forget about the two priests, Bernhard Hansky and Gerald Hupach. With Bernhard Hansky, you can never go wrong with this guy. He has a focused and brilliant lyric baritone voice, which is full and rich. And of course, Gerald Hupach's light tenor voice was a welcome compliment to Bernhard Hansky's fuller, richer tones. And these two had wonderful comic timing. They were able to play off of each other so exceptionally that there were times that I kind of laughed. And let's not forget about Tom Martinson's and Chow Dang's superb two-armed men, in which they were able to sing these two roles really well, all thanks to their fine musicianship and equally great timing that they managed to give in their voices. And of course, who can ever forget about the three boys sung tonight by the members of the Dresna Kreuzkoa. And they were sung by Julian Dekat, Leandro Matura, and Benjamin Taubat. Their voices blended so well, and I can definitely tell that these boys had a lot of fun embodying these three wonderful spirits. So overall, the singing was absolutely great all around. From veterans like Gerd Zeppenfeld and Christiana Hosfeld, all the way up to such young, fresh faces like Danea Contora and Rafael Fingerlos. Everyone went together so superbly, and their efforts were in great, wonderful unison. And the conducting done by Moritz Gnan was rather brisk on some occasions, but I thought that briskness had that energy and the vivacity he managed to give off, even though there were times I felt like a slower tempo would have been a little bit more beneficial. But I digress. He still managed to do a very fine job with keeping the orchestra and chorus together and all the singers as well. And he just did a very fine job. So overall, what a great first night I had at the Zempel Opa Dresden with a fine cast of singers. And of course, Achim Freya's rather interesting production of the Zauberflöte. And of course, such fine conducting done by Moritz Knan. I have to say that this was a very fine evening for opera. And for those of you who watched this particular production of Mozart's Die Zauberflöte, what did you think of it? Did you really feel like the likes of Rafael Fingerlos and Danae Contora did absolutely great jobs in their roles as Papageno and the Queen of the Night? Did you feel like there was another singer who also stood out to you so much? or even stole the likes of Danae Contora's thunder as the Queen of the Night? Or did you feel like there was something or someone that was kind of sticking out like a sore thumb? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in on Wednesday where I review Verdi's La Traviata, also at the Zempo Padre So until then, good night everybody.